बहुत पूछता थैंक यू इज ग्रेज प्रेशर टू स्पीक ऑन सब्जेक्ट दैट टूर ऑडियंस एरोडेट वेल द वॉटर्स क्यू वेन यू नॉट the spirit the spirit that been spirit of box conceived idea of separation of power he i think he never would have an idea of what really the separation function actually works he might have referred the westminster model of a structure of a separation of power but hardly in any democracy you don't find real separation of power works whether in us UK or in India, the Westminster model, in fact, the cabinet have a lot of influence in legislature that is brought into parliament. Whether it be US, whether it's US executive president is having so much of control over legislation in India as well. You can't think about executive, the dominant role in how uh, order legislation. so you can't think about a, a separation power maybe in reality how uh, i mean you can't think about a separation of power in the real terms so whether it be matter of judiciary or a parliament actually would have some say so you cannot ignore the voice of the people in that sense what is the real criteria to judge an institution in democracy perhaps that should be the subject today while considering the topic whether it be just or not in a democracy any public institution should be called or measured in terms of virtues it need to possess what that may virtue that should be the underlying principles in the debate any public institution in democracy is guided by three principles the transparency accountability and the capacity or capability of that institution to uphold the large public interest in a democracy as you know the people are the power of the sovereign they are also the subject of the sovereign so in a sense without there being an accountability you can't say that a democratic institution is a really worked on a democratic principle the question is whether it is or not we should not miss the boat for the tree the question is whether really these principles exist in any of the criteria been followed for the working of those institutions whether it be in collegium or in the ngc if all those institutions is capable to answer these three elements certainly we can say that it's live up to the democratic uh, principles if not we must say it is not in collegium it said that both the both two principles are absent one is the transparency and the accountability but third is a something an element of uh, subjective uh, uh, satisfaction of the members of the collegium in the ngc the judiciary appeared that the third element is missing though first two are may you can say that those elements exist so it is for us to debate on whether these elements are exist in europe this point but one way one what were i feel to say the democracy democracy itself cannot uh, face the challenges without we ensuring these three elements so thank you i open this subject for the debate we have a able moderate and narrated on the subject hope it will lead a lively debate today thank you thank you very much the first participant senior counsel advocate sumati dandapan thank you brother mustak 
welcome to all of you for a wonderful debate on behalf of Constitution Debate Club. And the issue before you is why not NJSA in India? Perhaps somebody else at the highest level could have said, why should it be? But that doesn't prevent us from having a discussion afresh. I'm here as the moderator, not the modulator. I won't be adding anything to the discussion except summing up in the end and putting the views before you for appreciation. And you could as well see the heat here. Perhaps you must have all been thinking that that's because of summer. At least until it's been made AC, the process seems to be going on. You have to bear with that one. But today the heat is not because of that, because of their preparation. They have come very much well equipped. And I could see in the terms of books before them, though each of them is given only seven minutes. And uh, there does seem to be sort of a balanced divide, also on the count of gender too. I believe it's just coincidental. There is a senior council of peace on either side and a doctorate on either side and an eminent, eminent council as well on either side. And they know the rules of the game and you know the rules of fairness. Kindly do appreciate them whenever they contribute something worth of note. You can have a good round of hearty applause for them, encourage them. See, in every place, perhaps, you have been here all around, but a person like me, a migrant bird, and no, in other places who have been obsessed with money, the moment the bell rings, we'll be rushing back, sitting in our offices, again counting currency. Not here in Kerala. You have been in pursuit of intellect. I haven't seen any <laughs> bar associations and advocate associations having such delightful, delectable intellectual treats except we here in our High Court. I salute to all of them for their efforts. I could see the council, whatever the rank, whatever the position they hold, coming and participating as if they were fresh from the college. Another sign of intellectuality that doesn't know the age of any person. My friends, as a preamble, as a curtain riser, as my learned brother has already said, I may not be referring to that sense that I am just Dharma, the moderator, not Jesse Snaibu here. So let me have no reference to the formalities. There are 195 countries, 195 countries in the world, and 193 on the roles of the UN. The highest 54 in Africa and then 48 in Europe, 45 in Asia, then 33 the rest of the months and eventually only two countries in one continent that's North America, Canada and the Ocean. But all these countries, 195, have different forms of governments. It could be monarchy as England is, Democracy as many nations are, or oligarchies as some Gulf Emirates are, aristocracies, or dictators, masked or unmasked, but all of them have different forms of government as I have said, but one feature is common, that is justice dispensation system. All of them need judges, and all of them need to appoint the judges, and the judges' appointments take various shapes and various forms. Here, there is a debate eternal, maybe from the dates of Anurabhi Kaur, or at least from 1215, when Magna Carta has come into existence. It has been a churning process. England that has had the system for about, say, 500 years, beginning at least from the 1600 William the Conqueror period. In 2005, they wanted to have a change. They came out with Constitutional Reforms Act. 2009, they came up with Supreme Court. 
every nation keeps on experimenting. It's not static. India is no exception. And the debate, the participants may as well remember, you're not bound by president. You can as well refer to president though. And you can have a free flow of ideas. And I wish both the teams the very best. Thank you. May I now invite the first participant of the debate, Senior Advocate Sumati Tatapani, to start the talk. Good evening, everybody. Uh, distinguished guests on the dais and off the dais, my dear friends. Uh, the topic is why not NJAC in India? Actually, it is the other side who is supporting this should have started according to me. And now since the ball is in our court, I am uh, compelled to start with. Why sh when the NJAC Act has been uh, set aside in 2016, then why again this NJAC is the question. What is the need for this NJAC when from 1949 onwards we have been following the system of uh, appointing Chief Justice the convention that is being followed though it is not so written in the constitution even in 1949 when federal court was in existence prior to Republic uh, Justice Khanna was appointed and uh, in 1950, uh, again after Republic, he was chosen as the Chief Justice of Supreme Court. Even though uh, he is expect one can continue at the, till the age of 62, unfortunately, while he was in office, uh, due to heart attack, he died. Then. From that period onwards, the convention is in the Supreme Court, uh, the Chief Justice is appointed, uh, taking into account uh, the seniority and the Chief Justice further participate in the appointments of the judges of the Supreme Court as well as that of the High Court, uh, that is with consulting the Collegium of the respective courts. The first judgment uh, that has been uh, dealing with the Collegium is reported in 1993. That is the first, uh, second judge's court, the judge's case, and it was followed by the third judge's case with reference. And in the first, uh, judge, second judge's case, of course, first judge's case is Gupta's case. Uh, that is not dealing with uh, uh, the collegium. Uh, it is only dealing with the case of transfers and appointment of the judges and of course also dealing with the circular that has been issued in 1981 by the Union Minister to all the judges as well as the Chief Justice of, the, uh, or Chief Justice of India. Uh, giving him that I will come to later. It is in the first and the second judges case only uh, consisting of nine judges uh, the question of primacy and also the strength of the judges was uh, considered. And in the, while considering the question of primacy, uh, it was uh, held by the majority of judges that the senior most uh, uh, judge of the respective, that is under, as per Article 124 and 217, uh, with respect to the Supreme Court as well as the High Court, the senior most person would be appointed as the Chief Justice, uh, that is in the Supreme Court and the other lower court as the uh, Chief, Chief Justice of the respective state and that initially uh, in the first judges, uh, second judges case, 
the consultation required was with respect to two uh, puny judges. That has been announced to four judges in the third judge's case. Because in the first judge's, uh, in the second judge's case, uh, soon after that, when uh, consultation was done with five judges, that was felt more attractive and the reference was made by the President and in the letter that has been uh, conveyed uh, by the President of India uh, to the Chief Justice uh, uh, due to which uh, the third uh, reference case was considered uh, they felt that the number could be increased of uh, collegium from 2 to 4 in the Supreme Court and uh, it is 2 in the High Court and uh, of course uh, this uh, after uh, deciding this case only, after deciding these two cases from, of course from 1950 onwards even though in the interregnum period Gupta's case came uh, even after that we were by convention following the system of uh, the collegium and uh, 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 appointing the senior judges as the chief judges and that practice was being followed either too and uh, after the NJC uh, Act has been set aside, recently I understand, uh, of course you must have read that uh, Justice Telemeshe has uh, dealt uh, with a uh, letter uh, that has been sent by Chief Justice of Karnataka. Uh, there what had happened is, Karnataka Chief Justice has uh, recommended five judges and uh, with respect to Judge A, he, that is the senior most judge, he had dealt uh, with a uh, disciplinary case with respect of a uh, magistrate of that state. And magistrate in retaliation has uh, sent this in complaints against this uh, senior most A judge. And uh, Chief Justice of course uh, uh, clarified and uh, sent uh, forwarded his letter, forwarded his name again and it was uh, on the verge of acceptance also. Meanwhile, what had happened is, the Union Minister has now sent a letter directly to the Chief Justice of Karnataka and uh, requesting to conduct an inquiry, de novo inquiry, against, uh, with respect to this uh, Judge A and find out what is actually transpired, whether his name can be considered. And it seems that Chief Justice has gone in, had, in furtherance of that letter, had conducted an inquiry and uh, after that only, has been intimated to the uh, Chief Justice of India. So it is apprehended again another Gupta's case may uh, come into due to this uh, interference of the executive unnecessary. Uh, since the time is over, sorry. Uh, Thank you very much. You have done wonderful. Thank, Thank you very much. I think now comes the turn of Senior Advocate Sri Amal Rajendra Nair.